All right, for this um, video and demonstration, I'm going to be showing you guys how to start your practice assignment for the um, CNC project. So in your practice assignment, using Cut 2D Pro on my desktop, it's right here. Um, we're going to double click on that to open a new file. So once I double click on Cut 2D Pro, I'm going to get a page that looks just like this. Um, what you very first need to start off with is creating a new file. So I'm going to click Create New File. And we have a couple of setup options that we need to do. So our size of our object um, is going to be based off the size of our plasma table that we have out there. Um, so our plasma table is 48 inches by 48 inches, or 4 foot by 4 foot. Um, and then we're going to mark the material thickness as 0 0.01. So if your job size measurements are any different than that, just highlight it and change it. So I just changed that to 60. It changes the job size. We're going to go back to 48, um, and it changes it back to a square. Um, the material, our, our zero Z0 zero position, we want to make sure is off of our material surface not the machine bed. So what that means is when we zero out our machine, it's gonna zero off of the top of our metal instead of the bed of the machine. And we wanna make sure that our zero, zero for X and Y is down here in the bottom left corner, not in the center or the top or the side. We want it to be down here in the corner, okay? After I have all of those set, I'm gonna click okay, and it allows me to start drawing. Um, just like some of your other programs we've learned to use, if you click on your rulers on the top or the bottom, your click and hold and drag over, it will give you guidelines. So these dotted lines are guides of how um, to help you line up your project a little bit better. So I'm going to zoom in on this corner down here, and my rulers kind of zero in or get closer also. So I can tell every single one of these lines is an inch now and then up to here would be 10 inches so if my project is uh, supposed to be 10 inches across that could be my um, guideline for that and then it is going to be six inches tall for my um, the face of your design and then we have a three inch leg so that would put us at nine inches so that would be the entire piece of material that your project is going to be using for your practice assignment so to start drawing our practice assignment, we're gonna click on this rectangle up here. Click on your rectangle, and then when I click down in my space, it gives me a rectangle. The rectangle, it automatically drops in, shows your width and your height right here. We want to change those to meet the requirements for our project, which our width is going to be 10 inches, and the height is six, and then when I push apply, it automatically changes that to uh, the dimensions that I need it to be. So I push close, click off of it, and when you click back on, um, you get this four-way arrow toggle to be able to move it around. And if I line it up with my guidelines and the edge of my paper or the edge of my work plane, I can drop it in place and um, see that it is 6 by 10 inches meeting up with my guidelines. Next thing you need to do for your practice assignment is uh, create legs so that when we have this sign that's gonna stand up, it will act, we'll bend those legs over and it'll actually stand. So I'm gonna click on my rectangle again and um, click down here. Gives me another rectangle that's the same size as the one before, um, which is 10 by six. I'm gonna go on ahead and change these this time. I want my width on my legs to only be one inch. And then the height of these is going to be three inches. And then I click apply and it gives me that size rectangle. Now, while I'm still in here, if I click down again, it is going to give me an extra leg or an extra piece of that same exact size. So when you guys are doing your project, if you have four, five, six sides that you need to all be the exact same, you can set it once and click as many times as you need, and you'll get an object or a shape that is the exact same as the one you already set. You don't have to continue doing it. So I'm gonna click apply and then close. And I don't need all these over here, so I'm going to delete them back out. If you click on it and then you push the delete button, you can delete those. Or if you click down below the object and click and hold and drag to create a box all the way around them and let go, it selects everything within that box. And now I can delete them all at the same time. Okay, next thing I need to do is place these legs in the right spot. Um, I want them to be about one inch 
off of the side of my design. So I'm going to click and hold and drag guidelines over again. And then I'm going to also create a guideline that is just barely above the bottom of my first rectangle. This guideline doesn't have to be a particular distance off the bottom. It is only helping you um, decide where or keep the legs level with each other. We don't want one leg to be way up here and then the other leg be super long and be way down here. So we're going to just put those uh, that guideline right here to make sure that they stay level with each other. So I'm going to zoom in, move this, line it up with those corner guidelines. Same thing over here. I'm going to come back and line that up with those two guidelines. So now my legs are in equal spots. They're about the same height off of the base of my sign. Next thing I need to do is get rid of these um, lines in between so that they don't um, actually get cut out by the CNC. I want these legs to be a part of this sign up here so they're all connected. Uh, so there's a couple ways that I can go about um, adding these, combining these together. One way is I'm going to select my outline and then push and hold shift and select your leg. And then you can come over here to the edit objects tab and click on this weld button. So when I click on that weld button, it welds those two objects together. And now it's one object and there's a gap in there. So it's a solid piece of metal. Um, I think another way that we can do it is if I click on the scissor button right here, I can actually trim out those two pieces. Um, and it cuts those lines in between the nodes or the vectors at the corner. Um, so that's another way that we can do it. All right, close back out of that. Two different ways to trim and edit an object there for you. All right, after this, we're gonna start adding in our name and an image that we want. For your name, we're going to click on draw text and it brings up this text box up, text box up here for you. So I'm going to go on ahead and type in my last name. If you want to do your first name or a nickname, I'm completely fine with that. Um, however, the font that you need to use, there's two specific fonts. One of them is the Plaz Sten or the Plaz R. Um, these are up here at the top because I've most recently used them. You may have to scroll all the way down to find them if this is the first time that you've chose text on your um, in your program. So the Plaz R and the Plaz Sten, if you guys zoom in or you look at it and notice there is cutouts in these letters to keep them separated from losing the insides of your um, letters. So on the inside of a capital B, we would lose both of those bubbles or the inside of an A, we would lose that on normal text like this one. So if I look at this piece, the inside of the G would fall out because it's not connected to the outside material. So I wanna make sure that I'm using the Plazar or the Plaz Sten. Those are the two choices that we have for the plasma cutter. So I'm gonna go back to the Plazar and then click close. Um, and if I click on my object, I can drag it over here where I want it at. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so I can grab these nodes or those little uh, dots around the outside and drag it to the size that I want it to be on my um, sign here. And then next thing I need to do is start choosing an object to go in the middle. Um, an object that I have chosen for you guys is going to be the Wyoming Steamboat. So I already um, clicked in, Google searched Wyoming Steamboat and found an image that I wanna use. Um, if this is not something you wanna do, that's completely fine. However, I do suggest using silhouette images um, so if I search up a guitar um, silhouette, it is going to bring in outlines of an object rather than shaded images. An outline is going to cut out much easier on the plasma cutter um, than a shaded image or um, something that has a lot of detail in it. So let's go back to the steamboat and I am going to use this image. I'm going to right click on it, copy image, Go back to, sorry, go back to your cut 2D and then you can right click again and paste that image in here. Um, so if I zoom back out, it pasted it in the middle of my um, page here. 
drag it back down so it's a little bit closer. Next thing I need to do is actually trace this. Right now, the program just sees it as a picture, but I don't have any lines to tell the machine where to cut it out at. So as I'm clicked on that picture, um, I am going to come up to, sorry, bear with me, forgot where that part was at. So while my image is selected, I need to be able to like create a bitmap out of this. So vectors, oh, trace bitmap right here under create vectors. Um, it is going to trace the outline of that image. So when I click on that, um, I want to change it to black and white, not color. And then preview shows me where it traced it. So those black lines, that's perfect. I'm going to click apply and close. So to, now I have that gray image still behind there. If I click on it, I can push delete and I'm left with just the outline of that image, which is exactly what I want. If I zoom in, I can see I have a couple of other things down here I want to get rid of. I don't need that trademark symbol and I don't want this rectangle right here. So I'm going to click on the whole thing and then right click and be able to ungroup objects. So just click ungroup objects and then ungroup to original layer. And now I can select that trademark symbol, this rectangle, delete those, and I'm left with just the design that I want. As I look at this design, same thing as the letters. If I don't um, do anything, this piece, when I cut out the outside, that piece will go away. The inside of the arm will go away. Um, any part that's not connected to the outside material will fall out when I cut it out in the metal. So what I have to do is create tabs um, to keep those pieces there. I'm going to come over here to my vectors and draw a polyline. So when I draw a polyline, I can zoom in down here and on the reins right here, I'm going to just kind of draw a line all the way across and give it a couple of... Um, Give it a couple of tabs to be able to create a section to actually hold this middle part in. So I'm going to come back and use my interactive trim tool or those scissors. And when I trim, I want to get rid of that line. And then I'm going to get rid of the line in the middle and that line. And now the inside triangle right there is connected to the outside of the metal so it doesn't fall out. Okay. Um, I'm going to trim a couple more things. So let's go back to our lines. I want to give this triangle part of the reins a little bit um, extra metal to be able to hold on to. So I'm going to add those in there. I'm going to add in a line down here to keep that middle part or the middle part of the leg in place. And then I also need to connect the arm so i'm going to draw another line going across there that way the arm is connected to the outside of the metal trim all those pieces back out um scissors trim trim zoom back out come down here to this one okay and the last one for the leg all right, now I have all of these pieces um, that are connected. It does change your image a little bit, but we don't want those pieces to fall out um, because it, certain images, it ends up taking away what the image is actually supposed to look like. So we want to make sure that we can actually see those lines. Right now, all of these pieces are separate. So if I click on this, I could move that um, by itself because I've ungrouped it. So I'm going to re-highlight everything, right-click, and group objects back together. Now it's all one solid piece again, and I can move it around to be able to get it placed. If I can grab that. I want to get it placed back inside my rectangle here. All right, so I had to double click to get that to move. And then I'm going to move it over here inside of my sign so that when I cut it out, it's inside that sign. I'm going to have to edit my name just a little bit, shrink it down. That way those aren't too close. They don't merge into each other. And 
I pretty much have my the design of my sign created. Um, so we'll end this video right here. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to add in your toolpaths. Um, before we leave, I'm going to make sure, I want you to make sure you save this. So we're going to go up to file, save as, and then I am just going to save it as Ingram. And I'm going to go to the desktop. In your desktop, you should have a folder that um, talks about your semester and the year. Um, right now, I'm going to use the fall 22 folder. So I'll double click on that. And whichever period you're in, you can click on that folder to save this file. That way you don't lose all your work. Um, so we'll just say period six and open and then save that file in there. Okay. Um, follow along to the next video for how to create your toolpaths, um, which is what you're going to need to actually be able to cut out your project.